Well, it's that point in the series where I look around me, note that my CGI surroundings are quiz show-ish, and obligingly provide a quiz to go in them. If you are a long-term, um, what are you called? Viewers? Watchers? Sufferers? Anyway, if you're a long-term victim of these things, you'll know that I strive to find ways of constructing a quiz that cannot be answered just by looking the questions up on Google. And this time round, I think I've hit on a method which also solves another problem with quiz shows and pub quizzes, that they reward the possession of useless knowledge about the length of rivers or succession of kings, and not the stuff we actually should know. Accordingly, I present an emotional intelligence quiz. I imagine you've already spotted the floor, but don't worry, obviously I will not be judging this one myself. I mean, for God's sake, that wouldn't be so much the blind leading the blind as the blind blinding the sighted. No, the competition will be judged by an expert in emotional intelligence, by which I obviously mean a woman. Probably Ellie in the office, but we haven't asked her yet. Question one. What do you do when you're briefly left alone with an acquaintance and they start crying? Brackets, not because of something you've done, close brackets. A. Immediately hug them. B. Pretend it's not happening and quietly leave. It's got to be this one, surely. Please let it be this one. C. Ask them what's wrong, whilst desperately hoping they won't tell you. D. Put them at their ease by bursting into tears yourself. Question 2. You're going to a birthday drinks at a pub. It's for someone you used to work with, but don't work with anymore, but still keep in sporadic touch with, but would never meet one-on-one. -on -one. You have their personal email, but not their phone number. That sort of friend. OK, what do you take? A. A card and present. B. A card but no present. C. A present but no card, because you're mad. D. Nothing. It's drinks in a pub. You don't have to buy stuff to go to the pub. Question three. What do you do if someone smells? No, not what are you supposed to do, what do you actually do? It's a good friend, but not a best friend. He has better friends who see him more often and should be telling him stuff like this. A. Tell him in some unimaginable way. B. Tell his friends to tell him, risking, of course, that they tell him you told them to tell him. His friends are dicks. C. Don't tell him, but as punishment for your cowardice, keep seeing him. D. Don't tell him and contrive only ever to meet him in wide open spaces or when you're suffering from a heavy cold. Question 4. A friend has been declared bankrupt. You know, and he knows you know, but you haven't discussed it. When you go to the pub, how many times is it okay to let him buy the drinks? A. Not at all, the poor guy's bankrupt, you heartless monster. B. Once, to show that everything's normal, but not again, because it's not. C. Every other round, as usual, because anything else would be patronising. D. Every other round, as usual, because that's the system, damn it! Question 5. A woman you know has pointedly dressed up for an occasion. She looks fine. Not great, not awful. All you can see is the effort. What do you say? A. My God, you look amazing. B. My God, you look fine. Not great, but not awful. C. My God, that must have taken you ages. D. Right, should we go? That's it. Best of luck. Send your entries to... Bye. I'm afraid there's no prize this time round, but we will give a present to the winner to say sorry for there not being a prize. But no card. Thank you.